All right, so last week I uploaded a video called Ranking the Sword of X and Ys and Commanders, something along those lines. And that video was ranking all of the swords in a vacuum. If you want to check it out, it's in the description. I'll put it in the description or it'll be up here, I think, or up here, one of the two. But basically that video was ranking all of the sword of X and Ys in kind of a vacuum. So if you didn't know what deck you were putting them in, this would be the best one. Spoiler, it's Sword of Feast and Famine, but that is not Commander. So today I'm going to take a look at each sword once again and explain what what type of decks could use what sword so basically if you're building x commander deck should you consider this sword as being in the 99 so without further ado hit the like button for the youtube algorithm and let's hop right into the video so off the bat realistically all of the swords are going to be good in equipment strategies or double strike focus strategies or strategies that make you want to get multiple combats right so stuff like aurelia basically any boris commander printed over the past couple of years stuff like that right so let's get the boring obvious stuff out of the way and let's talk about some specific swords and what deck lists they could be good in. For sort of body and mind, I know I kind of clowned on this in the last video, rightfully so because it is kind of bad because if you're running a mill deck there are a lot easier ways to mill repeatedly stuff like mind crank nemesis of reason mesmeric orb pretty much all of those are going to want to run over sword of body and mind because they mill more cards repeatedly and they're easier to i guess trigger however this sword seems decent in haunt of hightower and it seems okay in tollsmere friend of wolves because you can consistently get the 2-2 fight trigger but even so they'll probably be better cards in the 99 than this sword but if you're running like a haunt of hightower tollsmere that's basically <laughs> it you can probably consider this sword sword of feast and famine i mean what can i say you're basically gonna want to put this in any deck that can reliably equip it and attack with it however it will be slightly better in green decks just because of the aspect that if you're playing a green deck you'll probably have more land-based ramp so therefore you'll have more lands to untap with its ability. Sword of Fire and Ice. This sword is a pretty generic sword and it's also pretty open-ended. I don't really see any specific deck or commander or archetype that this would be the best in. I guess it would be the best in equipment decks because they obviously have a focus around swords and maybe it'll be best in decks that are red or white or a combination so like mono red mono white or boros. Even saying that though they are getting a lot of better options for card draw nowadays. Stuff like Archimist, Archivist of Ogma, Takazia's Welcome, Welcoming Vampire. Even like mono white is getting slightly better options for card draw but if an equipment that draws cards is something that you're interested in or there's a lot of red and blue in your meta then maybe this sword could be worth considering sword of forge and frontier like i mentioned in the last video this sword really shines in cast from exile decks so decks like prosper Faldor, and anything that backgrounds with passionate archaeologists as well as landfall decks or decks that want extra land plays so stuff like tatiova omnath either the two color or the four color one specifically. And it's also a bit more corner case, but any decks that want land-based ramp that are outside of green. So something that comes to mind for me is Dakon Blackblade, for example. Sword of Hearth and Home. Okay, let's get the obvious stuff out of the way real quick. This sword obviously slots into Blink decks and Landfall decks. Like even past those first two archetypes, this sword slots into so many decks it's insane. So for starters, if your commander even has a decent ETB ability, you're going to want to put this sword in. One of my friends has a clone deck and it's pretty solid in there to reset what one of the clones is if something better came on the board. If your commander has a really powerful passive that runs out, for example like AC or Azusa, then you can flicker that to get a new reset on that passive since they're technically new objects. You can use that same principle to get multiple uses out of once each turn passives. So stuff like Kess, Mavinda, and my personal favorite, Belladros Witherbloom. That's only a handful of uses, but I'm sure there are so many more. So if you can think of any that I didn't mention, leave them down in the comments below. For Sword of Light and Shadow, on top of having the best top tier color protection, actually, upon looking into it, I actually think this combat ability is pretty good. It may be worth looking into in a life gain deck, but I don't think that's where this shines. It's obviously good in an Aristocrats deck, right? Being able to sacrifice a utility creature or a token creator or one of your aristocrats if an opponent kills it and then just get it back is obviously pretty good. I also think this sword could be pretty good in any deck that wants to sacrifice its commander repeatedly. Granted, this usage is a little bit worse with the relatively recent commander dies rules change, but if you're running a deck like Safi Eric's daughter where you're gonna want your commander to die again and again and again, then I think this sword could be worth looking at. In the same vein, if your commander has a dies trigger like Alenda, Roalesque, or one of the Kamigawa dragons, either the new or the old one, I guess, instead of paying that two commander tax each time, you could just recur it with this sword. Sword of Once and Future. Like I said in my 
my previous video, this sword is pretty bizarre and counterintuitive. However, there are a couple decks that could want it. Baral and Kari Zev, for example, like I said before, could make good use of it. And this commander is really fucking weird and I just found out it existed, but Tetsuo Imperial Champion, I guess? Also, any weird creature-based spell slinger brew could probably make decent use out of this sword. For Sword of Sinew and Steel, this one's pretty weird because it's pretty generic, kind of like Sword of Fire and Ice, but its ability also isn't that high up on the spectrum. So I would think you would realistically only want to put this sword in equipment decks or decks that really want the protection from red. So any like group slug decks, any deck that runs a bunch of earthquake effects, etc. But also if you're running liquid metal coating or liquid metal torque, I think this is a pretty solid sword to look at. For Sword and Truth of Justice, all right, do I have to point out the obvious? Any deck that wants counters or prolific proliferation, slot it in. If your commander has the word counter on it, you should probably slot it in. If your commander plays with weird counters like Miglaws, Immerd, commanders that play with experience counters, you'll probably want to take a look at this sword. This one's pretty obvious and you'll know if you want it when you start building your deck. For Sword of War and Peace, like I mentioned in the previous video, you'll probably want to consider this sword if you're running an aggressive deck or a deck that wants to end the game quickly. So dealing an extra 5 damage every combat could add up pretty quickly. And this one also shines in decks that deal with extra combats like Morag or decks that you deal with double strike or dealing double damage, stuff like that. Of course, it will probably slot into some life gain decks too, but on that note, it's probably better with commanders that deal with how much life you gain. So stuff like Shana and Asterion, not something like Lathril or Karlov. Plus, this is the only sword under $10. So at this price point, I think this is a pretty solid pickup. Side note, how the hell is the old border sword of Hearth and Home only slightly above $10? I mean, I get it, Modern Horizons 2 was printed to hell, but Jesus Christ, if you want this sort of hearth and home, go pick them up now. Like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you have a great day.